Hello, um, I'm Anthony Barbie, and this is a book review of Art and the Bible by Francis Schaeffer for my Intro to the Arts class for Professor Kent Sanders. Um, I'm going to start off with, with the prologue. It talks about um, kind of the argument between the, well, it was the last generation about art in the church and new music forms and new art and, you know, drama being used and people thought that that was kind of unscriptural and this book is a defense of art in the Bible and <clears throat> I'm just going to go, gonna go through it. It's, it's not a very long book. It's like 95 pages or something. Um, and I did read all of it, by the way. Um, st it starts off, Francis Schaeffer uh, talks about how Jesus is supposed to be in charge of every aspect of our life, not just our salvation, although that is important. He's supposed to be in charge of our mind, our emotions, our body, everything. And that includes art. Um, a lot of people will make the argument that, you know, it says in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not make any graven images. Um, but, you know, you look at that and a passage in Levitus, Leviticus 26.1, and it, it says, you know, in context, later on it says you shouldn't make these things and then worship them. It's not the art itself that's being condemned, it's the worship of the art that's being condemned. And, you know, art isn't necessarily a bad thing. And Francis Schaeffer goes into uh, explanations about examples of rep representational art in Scripture. There was art in the tabernacle, there was art in the temple, and these designs came from God Himself. You know, there were there were pillars, there were engravings, there were beautiful things, you know, the, the candlestick had al almond blossoms carved into it, and the cherubim, you know, made out of gold, and, <clears throat> you know, God is not against art, I mean, He created art. And the fact that we create things is, you know, um, is valuable, because we're made in the image of God, and God created, and so we also create things. Uh, some in more capacity than others, but that's not really the point. Um, it says in Scripture that, that these things, you know, in the temple and the tabernacle, they were made because they were beautiful. And, you know, God appreciates beauty. I mean, just look at what He made. It's it's pretty obvious that, that God likes beautiful things, and we should, we should like beautiful things as well and pursue creating them. Um, Schaefer, he gives a lot of examples of... Um, you know, things that were used in worship, things that weren't used in worship, um, as far as representational art. And then he also talks about poetry, you know, there were the Psalms uh, that David wrote, there was also Song of Solomon, which really Song of Solomon in its in and of itself doesn't doesn't really talk about God. I mean you can say that it talk it it's a parallel to Christ and the church, but really it's about a man and a woman and, you know, it's not really directly worshiping God, but it's it's part of our scripture, and so that should be a clue to us that, that art isn't a bad thing, especially poetry. Um, he talks about music, you know, there was music in the temple, David himself created some instruments for use in the temple worship, there was, you know, Ezekiel, he had a drama, he like, he drew out the siege of Jerusalem for, for a year, um, and then Miriam let all the people of Israel in a dance after they were set free from Egypt. And, you know, even King David himself danced w with all of his might when the Ark of the Covenant came back into the uh, the city of Jerusalem. And so he makes a lot of examples throughout Scripture. Uh, you know, the fact that there's even art in heaven. In, Re in Revelation it talks about, you know, people singing and, and there being a glass sea and stuff. And that stuff is just beautiful. And that's that's why it's there. God appreciates beauty. Um, and then from there, he moves on to kind of a, it's like a second chapter, basically, even though it's a short book. Uh, it talks about perspectives on art, and he gives 11, and I don't know if I have time to go over all 11 of them, but, you know, basically, some of the important ones are that art, art, bleh, artwork has value in itself because it's a work of art, and, you know, the fact that we are creative, as God is creative, makes it beautiful. Now, it's not always good because sometimes we create bad things, but, you know, in and of itself, creativity is a good thing. Uh, art adds strength to a worldview. It's not, 
it doesn't make the worldview true, but like if you were to write something down, you know, just a statement, yeah, you would get your point across, but if you say it in an art form, like say you write a song about it, or you paint a picture of it, it's going to get across a lot stronger than it would if you just wrote it or said it, you know. And again, not to say that it's true, but it does make it more powerful. Um, you know, art should be judged by technical excellence, basically, you know, how well it's crafted uh, physically. Validity, you know, it should be genuine. It shouldn't be made just to make a paycheck or just to get into the art museum. You know, it should it should have some kind of genuine meaning from, from the heart of the artist. Uh, intellectual content, it should convey some kind of meaning. You know, it shouldn't just be made just to be made. You know, it should have some some kind of meaning to it um, and also like the content vehicle integration uh, what you use to portray the art should match the message that you're trying to get across um, and then he, he he goes on to talk about a few others but one that I want to hit is the he talks about Christian worldview and Christian art um, you know he says the Christian worldview is of the major theme and the minor theme the minor theme being that man has fallen that man is broken and you know life is hard basically but the major theme is that we have a hope and we have a purpose in Jesus Christ and in God and um, because we're made in the image of God and all that uh, and Christian art should express that it should express both themes you know it shouldn't express all one side or, or the other because if it, if it only expresses the major theme it's romanticized and no one really pays attention but if it only expresses the minor th or expresses the minor theme then you know it's it's just it's just depressing and so we should have a good balance between that you know showing the entire life um, and he's, he talks about how artists make a body of work you know you can't you can't tell everything about an artist from one work you have to look at his entire collection to know something about him and uh, that's where that's pretty much where the book ends um, I skipped over some stuff for the sake of time, but I did read all of it. Uh, I I actually enjoyed this book. I thought it was a really great, uh, I guess, eye opener, because I never really thought about art before. But I think I think it's helped me just kind of appreciate it a little more. And it, I can also use it as a defense, you know, in my, in my ministry because I'm going into youth ministry. If anyone ever comes to me and talks to me about the art forms I'm using, I can I can use this as a defense and say, hey, look. You know, God appreciates beauty just as much as we do, and we should be using art. So, there it is. Uh, I hope it's under five, uh, seven minutes. Um, thank you very much. Ta-da.